This next topic here is called projecting. And you can think of this as how you navigate the 3D space. So really, it might seem complicated at first, but it's just a simple set of rules. So here I have this one point. Well, in two-point perspective, what can I do? I can go up or down, or I could go towards one of the vanishing points. Towards the right vanishing point, or towards the left vanishing point. That's it. So it's going to be on one of these axes. That's projecting. And then to continue building in this way, you would take any of these new points and follow the same rules. Up, down, project back into space, project forward into space, left, right. This is just using the 3D grid and sort of measuring. So if I have this intersection here and I want to apply some height, I know that I can only go straight vertical because that would be pr parallel with the lines in the grid. And I can do that infinitely high. And I'll do that with all the other points. So verticals are easy in two point, straight up and down. Okay, well now I want to define the height. So I'll pick on any of my verticals. I'll pick a little height line here. So I'm just going to put a little tick that says how high this cube is going to be. So now I'm going to project sideways. And sideways is a little more complicated, but not much. So here I can go in one of two different directions. I can either make the front side of the cube, or I can make the back side of the cube. Those are really the only directions I'm allowed to project in perspective. So I'm going to make the front side of the cube, and I'm going to project out in this direction, making sure to stay between the parallel lines of the grid. Okay, well now I have a new intersection. You can see that right there. So from this new intersection, I'm not going to project up, I've already done that, so I'm going to project to the side. Now this time I'm going to be following the left vanishing point, so I'm going to make sure I stay parallel that way. Well, here I have a new intersection. So once again, I'll project staying parallel to the vanishing points. Once again, I'm given a new intersection. So I'll go the last remaining direction out that way. There we go. Now to make sure I actually still have a cube, I'll erase away some of this extra stuff. So in this way, you're using each of these successive intersections between different planes as sort of reference points to continue your way around the cube. And because everything's in parallel, I could just pick on one of my faces how high I want it to be. Like, I'll divide this again right here. And then if I just project my way around, I'll know that it will be even across the whole cube. Now, projecting horizontally is the exact same thing. I'll begin by taking an intersection, and I'm going to follow the perspective lines. This one, same deal. So I'll take each of these points and project them out into space. And then on one of them, I'll decide how much length I want. I'll say right there. So I'll erase everything after that, and then project this back towards the other vanishing point. And I'll take a vertical straight up, very easy. And now I have a new intersection. So I'll take this intersection and project it back in space. Now I have a new intersection. So I'll drop a straight line. And there I have all of it. I'll erase away what I don't need. And I've successfully projected out some extra space onto this rectangular prism. So in the example, you saw a number of rectangular prisms that were all the same width. Well, here we're going to use projecting in a different way. 
So before I was actually drawing solid lines. Well, here I've projected some dotted lines out. And I'm just going to use these dotted lines for measuring. So now that I've got sort of the width of one of my rectangles projected out in both directions, I can use that as an anchor to begin drawing my new rectangles. So I know that one dimension is already figured out for me. It's going to go right along those dotted lines. Well, the other dimension is going to project back towards the other vanishing point. So I could keep making as many of these rectangles as I wanted. And they're all going to be the exact same width because I'm using the width of that first rectangle as my aid. All right, so like the example here, I want to have two rectangular prisms that are the exact same height. All right, so I've got the footprint. I'm beginning to project vertically, but I need to know when to stop. So to do that, I'll extend a horizontal line from the top of the original cube. That dotted line is going to tell me exactly how tall I need to make this new cube. So right there, that intersection, I'm going to project that out. And where that meets the vertical here, again, the top of my cube. So in this way, you can use each of these intersections to build out your shape in the exact same way you've been doing. And then once you've constructed the top, you know that they are the exact same height because they line up on this projection line right here. And you just erase away whatever you don't want. Okay, that was a lot of information. This is probably very new for you, and it might seem like a bit overwhelming. So if you look in the resource folder, there are some worksheets for you to do. I want you to start out with the ones that have individual planes and a little arrow next to them, and you're supposed to project them along that arrow. So only project them as long as the arrow indicates, and you can either leave them as wireframes or fill them in if you want. But this will just kind of get your feet wet with this idea of taking a plane and projecting it. And once you've done all these worksheets, it should probably be feeling a little bit more comfortable. And at this point, I'd invite you to go to the resource folder and get some of the empty grids and make some cubes. See if you can get two cubes that are exactly the same height, or potentially three cubes in a line that are all the same width. What this is doing is training you to think in terms of the 3D grid. And the more you can sort of internalize this thinking, freehand perspective sketching will get way, way easier. So don't go on to the next video until you've practiced this a little while, and I promise this will get easier once you've done a little bit more of it.